Thank you for joining me for a little impromptu college coffee talk. My name is Andy Lockwood. This is the semi-monthly series of videos that we put out all about college, college stuff, college, college planning, getting into college, paying for college, test prep, you name it. Today is March 28th, which to most of the world doesn't really mean anything significant, but to a lot of high school class of 2018 seniors, it's Ivy Day. And like every year that I've been in this field, I expect good news and I expect bad news um, from kids. So I just thought I would throw out a few comments that I think are important to remember. Um, sometimes easier said than adhered to. But first of all, sometimes it seems like there's no rhyme or reason to who gets in and who doesn't. Even when kids have, you know, quote unquote, the total package meaning superior grades and scores, amazing extracurricular activities and essays and all that, sometimes even they don't get into their top choice schools. My, my question actually is really, does, it, does this even matter? I'll get to that uh, at the end. But, you know, you can have, um, you can be the brightest, most hardworking kid. Uh, you can be a standout at your own high school in terms of your extracurriculars and your student involvement and things like that. Who knows? You could be a great athlete. You could be homecoming king. You could be um, who knows? That doesn't really matter. You get the point. And then you could still not get in. And the reason might be just that there's a lot of kids just like you applying to schools that admit five percent or seven percent or or nine percent. And within that five, seven, or nine percent, that gross number, there are a bunch of special um, agenda specific categories. Agenda specific meaning what the colleges care about not necessarily what you care about, that they have their own missions to fulfill. So they have to have a certain amount of legacies. They have to have a certain amount of international students, of um, uh, recruited athletes, of underrepresented minorities, and you, you name it. So those, those categories tend to bring down the averages, just to be totally frank and politically incorrect. So if you look at your shot at getting in and you're not one of these special categories, if you're a, just a bright, hardworking kid with no, you know, hook, sometimes they're, they're referred to as, um, your real rate of admission may not be 9%, it might be half that, it might be less. So <clears throat> that's just, just, just the way it is, and um, I've had a few conversations over the last couple of days where um, it seems to me that the parents take it a little bit harder than kids, and I think, uh, I, think I understand that as a parent of four kids. But... Sometimes I wonder, you know, is this really the first time that a kid has faced any type of setback in, in reality, the first time they've been rejected from anything? Because a lot of kids who are these, you know, 98, 104 average kids with great scores and all that have never really faced any type of major adversity. Not that I would consider, not, uh, you know, being denied from an Ivy League school an adversity, but that, that's part of it also. A lot of kids just don't, ha how to, don't know how to deal with someone telling them, no, you know, you're not good enough for me. So, you know, maybe it's a life lesson. I don't really believe in that so much, but um, I, don't, I also don't believe in everything happens for a reason. You know, sometimes you can't figure out the reason. We're trained as a species to try to figure out the reason. Oh, you know, the reason you, you didn't get in is because uh, your essay was bad, or the reason you got it was because your essay was great, or, you know, the reason you lost the election is because of blah, 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 or, or the reason you won the election is, you know, because of one thing. It's, it's not, I don't think it's ever really one thing. Okay, part two of what I wanted to talk about, which I think is more important, is does it really matter? Does it really matter if you don't get into an Ivy League school? So I talk about this from time to time. Um, there's a, a study that's sort of famous in, in my circles. It was actually updated, so it's really two studies that tracked uh, different kids who, uh, the first time it tracked um, uh, one cohort of kids who all uh, got into an Ivy League school, but half of those kids chose not to attend the Ivy League school or, or equivalent possibly out of financial consideration. So they went to you know, a, their, their own in-state state school or something. After 10 years, uh, each cohort, each set of kids had the same earnings. There was no market difference in how successful they were, at least financially. Phase two of the study a few, a few years later, and this, if you want to look it up, it's by Kruger and Dale. Uh, I think Kruger is K-R-U-E-G-E-R, -E but it might be, I might have me messed up the U and the E. One was a Princeton economist. I can't remember where the other person uh, hailed from. Anyway, this, the, the second part was they tracked a set of kids who, had, who looked similar on paper in terms of their grades and their SATs, 
but one set got in to the IV and the other set did not get in. And guess what? After 10 years, same result for all intents and purposes, which to me implies that college and success is really a lot more about what you put into it or how you see yourself. So maybe the set of kids who saw themselves as belonging in the Ivy or you know similar type of echelon, you know, who knows? Maybe they went into um, uh, into college with a little chip on their shoulder. Maybe they worked a little extra hard just to prove that they really you know belonged at the uh, at the elite college. Um, I've seen that happen over and over again. Uh, I'm going to see my uh, my niece for the holidays in a, in a couple of days, and she's a good example of that. She didn't get into her top choice Ivy League school, but she ended up going to one of the public Ivies, uh, one of the best you know, state schools in the country, and she ended up graduating uh, you know, top of her class, and she got into a uh, top ten law school, which she probably who knows maybe or probably would not have gotten into had she got into the Ivy League undergrad. So when you're thinking about the long game, you know, the f uh, not just the four years of college, but what happens afterward, you know, it might, there might even be an argument that it's better to not get into the Ivy League school. In, th in this case, with grad school on the horizon, uh, I, I feel like that's a good argument. So um, the bottom line, w w what I'm getting at is, uh, if, if your kid is hardworking and successful and, um, you know, uh, just does, does everything that they need to do to get the job done, and then they don't get into their top choice school, that's probably going to have zero impact on how successful they are, uh, not, in, not just in college, but after college, because all those characteristics, those traits of being hardworking and doing whatever it takes and, and all that may not have had an immediate payoff of you know, getting into a college after being judged against thousands of similar looking people by um, a set of admissions officers that they never will have you know, met most likely. It's kind of an odd thing. But it may not pay off that way, but I, I can almost guarantee you it's going to pay off for how well they do in life afterward because that's, that's what really makes you successful, it's those habits and those behaviors. So um, if you don't get in to your top choice college today, I know it stings. Um, sorry, you know, sorry, but in the long term, it's really not going to matter. And if you do get in, if you do get great news, congratulations. That's great, too. But, but that's not the end of it. That's just the beginning, too. Just because you get into an Ivy League school doesn't mean that, you know, the rest of your life is set. Uh, that's a whole other topic, and I, I don't want to end on a down note. So, uh, so thanks a lot for watching this episode of Impromptu College Coffee Talk. And good luck today, and uh, if you have any, you know, questions, uh, either pop them in comments here or if it's something a little more private in nature, uh, just message me, and I'll get back to you. Um, I'm going to be pretty busy today, but I'll, I'll try to get back to you within uh, a reasonable amount of time. All right. Have a great day. Bye-bye.